In the forests and floodplains of Lake Cretaceous, North Africa, one of the largest and most powerful predators ever to grace the surface of planet Earth stalks its prey. Lurking in the tree line, it quietly observes a small herd of sauropods who have congregated at the edge of the lake to drink. Biding its time for the perfect moment to strike, this is Carcharodontosaurus, a gigantic apex predator, a member of the theropod family that also includes giants such as Acrocanthosaurus and Giganotosaurus. The carnivore lays low in the shadows where its form is broken up by the mottled light shimmering down from the canopy. And the herd of sauropods are yet to notice the danger skulking just 50 meters or so from where they have gathered. One individual, a juvenile sauropod, enticed by movements in the shrubs, begins to wander dangerously close to where the hunter is waiting. Minutes pass, and when the sauropod is within a safe striking distance, Carcharodontosaurus bursts from the cover of the foliage and ambushes it. Covering the distance between it and its prey in just a few seconds, the theropod seizes the young sauropod's long, thin neck in its jaws, slicing into it with long, sharp teeth. In less than a minute, the sauropod is brought to the ground and Carcharodontosaurus has disappeared into the tree line with its catch, where it will bring the carcass to its own young. In today's video, we will be examining the life, habits, evolution, and habitat of Carcharodontosaurus, exploring not only how it lived, but also how it was brought to the attention of scientists in the first place. Join us as we take a trip through time back to the Sanomanian stage of the Lake Cretaceous, to the floodplains of North Africa, to discover Carcharodontosaurus, one of the largest theropod dinosaurs ever to walk the Earth. Carcharodontosaurus described by scientists in 1925, was a genus of gigantic theropod dinosaur, which lived across North Africa from roughly 99 million years ago to 94 million years ago in the Cenomanian stage of the Late Cretaceous period. It is to date one of the largest known theropod dinosaurs and was an apex predator in its environment. Carcharodontosaurus saharicus, the type species is thought to have measured as much as 12 and a half meters in length from nose to tail, weighing in at over six metric tons. One of the most striking features of this dinosaur is its huge skull. Despite its size, it is rather lightly built and contributed to how the dinosaur was given its name. Within the jaws of the skull are rows of razor-sharp teeth, serrated on the edges and recurved back towards its body. These teeth are similar in form and structure to those of a great white shark, a species of fish belonging to the genus Carcharodon. Add the suffix Osaurus to this name, and you have a name that translates into English as shark-tooth lizard a fitting moniker for its status as apex predator for these North African wetlands. Although the skull of this dinosaur was large, it was surprisingly delicate. This has led paleontologists to believe that it was not well equipped for crushing, like say a Tyrannosaurus skull, but rather this was a dinosaur that slashed and cut at its prey with its sharp, serrated teeth. Following the skull was the familiar form of the giant Lake Cretaceous theropod dinosaurs. A thick, flexible neck was met with a tall, horizontally held torso, with two relatively small arms projecting from the front. The legs were long and powerful, and the dinosaur carried itself in a bipedal stance that allowed it to run after prey. A long, tapering tail was held out behind the torso, which acted as a counterweight to balance the dinosaur's head.
Archaerodontosaurus became known to science when two teeth were excavated from the walls of underground aqueducts in what is now south-central Algeria. The teeth were removed from the wall and taken to the governor of the nearby town Timimoon, who passed them on to French geologist Charles Deperay. Deperay initially identified the teeth as belonging to a large theropod and described the dinosaur as a new genus of Megalosaurus, naming it Megalosaurus saharicus. This was a period in time when many unknown large theropods were being lumped under the name Megalosaurus, as scientists were using it as a wastebasket taxon to name any similar dinosaur that did not have a certain placement in the theropod family tree. In 1927, the Megalosaurus stance was revised, and the dinosaur was reconsidered to be a member of the genus Dryptosaurus, but little evidence was presented to back this up. At this stage, nobody knew it, but these were the bones that would eventually be the first considered concrete evidence of Carcharodontosaurus, and the first of several large theropods that coexisted in Sanomanian North Africa. The discoveries of these teeth led paleontologists to reconsider old finds that may have belonged to the same giant theropod dinosaur. It would eventually become clear that several fossils that were unearthed in 1914 in Ain Jadid, in what is now Egypt, actually belonged to Carcharodontosaurus from individuals that lived in the Bahariya Formation. Amongst the fossils that were assigned to Carcharodontosaurus from this region were a partial skull, several more teeth, several vertebrae bones, fragments of the pelvis, fragments of the dinosaur's claws, a thigh bone, and a bone from the lower leg. These bones were eventually described by German paleontologists from Munich in 1931, where the name Carcharodontosaurus was issued formally. Unfortunately, in the war-torn years that would follow, these remains would be destroyed when Munich was bombed by British forces in 1944. Fortunately, however, a cast was made that allowed paleontologists to preserve these fossils for science. For a long while, this was the only evidence known to science belonging to Carcharodontosaurus. It wasn't until 1995 that another significant Carcharodontosaurus discovery was made. Paul Serino, an accomplished American paleontologist, discovered an incomplete skull in the Kemkem beds of southeastern Morocco. This find was designated as the neotype fossil for Carcharodontosaurus saharicus on account of the original specimen having been destroyed in World War II. Elsewhere in the Kemkem beds have been discoveries including several teeth, caudal vertebrae, and other dentary fragments. Due to the incomplete nature of Carcharodontosaurus fossil material, scientists are still learning a lot about this animal and how it lived and hunted its prey. One large indicator as to how it might have lived is the abundance of teeth that have been assigned to this animal. In comparison to other large theropods, such as Tyrannosaurus, these teeth are thin and are thought to have been frequently replaced in life. Unlike dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus rex, Carcharodontosaurus could not have relied upon crushing its prey on the same scale as other large theropods. The jaw strength and structure of the teeth simply would not allow such a feat without sustaining irreversible damage. Studies on the bite force of Carcharodontosaurus have backed this up. The dinosaur was not capable of crushing and eating bones and it is thought to have only eaten the softer material on a carcass. From this, it can be implied that Carcharodontosaurus preferred to slash and pick at its prey with its shark-like teeth, causing intense bleeding damage and cutting open wounds into the flanks and necks of its prey. 
It was a purely terrestrial hunter and would likely have utilized ambushing techniques to bring down sauropods and ornithischians that wandered close enough to where it lurked in the foliage. The neotype skull specimen discovered by Paul Serino shows that this individual in particular lived a difficult life. It appears to have recovered from wounds inflicted from biting, subsequent infections, and even breaks in the facial bones. Puncture wounds have been identified in the nasal region, and bones have been displaced and ejected from their regular positions from stress and damage. All of these inflictions have been proposed to be the results of bites to the face, perhaps from a rival Carcharodontosaurus, attempting to ward the neotype individual away from its territory. Unlike Tyrannosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus is thought to have lacked acute binocular vision. Its long, large snout would have limited its binocular capabilities, implying that in order to get the best view of its surroundings, the dinosaur would have held its head down at a 40-degree angle whilst looking up in order to scout out prey or analyze its situation. Its vision range is similar to that of a modern crocodile, and the dinosaur is thought to have sensed its next meal by contrasting motion against a still background, lowering its head in order to advance its vision and strike at the right time. North Africa during the Cenomanian stage of the late Cretaceous period was characterized by many aquatic or semi-aquatic environments, and Carcharodontosaurus therefore filled the ecological niche of the apex predator of the terrestrial realms. Northern Africa backed onto the Tethy Sea during this time, and the coastlines of the continent were lined with rich mangrove forests, tidal flats, rivers, lakes, and swamps. Just like areas in modern Africa, it is thought that many of these regions would have been warm, with seasonal monsoons that brought colossal quantities of water to the region. This place and time in prehistory is famous for its plentiful giant carnivores, an unusually greater number of which were contrasted against the relatively small number of herbivore species. The carnivores here split up their ecological niches into different areas, with some evolving to hunt fish, some partaking in smaller prey, and others like Carcharodontosaurus evolving to hunt down large herbivore species such as sauropods and large ornithischians. Carcharodontosaurus would have shared the swamp forests and watersides of northern Africa, with an iconic giant, Spinosaurus, perhaps the largest carnivorous dinosaur ever to live. This massive, semi-aquatic piscivore would have thrived in the waterways of ancient Africa where it paddled through the water with its long crocodile-like tail and slender, snapping jaws. It is not known how these two gigantic species would have interacted, but they occupied very different specializations in their late Cretaceous home. Another large theropod whose range crossed over with Carcharodontosaurus was Delta Dromius, a slender and much faster animal that is thought to have possibly been a pursuit predator rather than an ambush hunter. The sauropods that would have crossed into Carcharodontosaurus' range include giants such as Paralititan, as well as the likes of Aegyptosaurus and Rabacosaurus. The waters of ancient North Africa were filled with strange yet familiar creatures, many of which would have been preyed upon by the likes of Spinosaurus, while Carcharodontosaurus looked on from the shoreline the huge sauskate fish Oncopristus, with a sword-like rostrum and wing-like fins, would have swam in the lakes and rivers, accompanied by Mossonia, a colossal relative of the coelacanth. 
Elsewhere, the giant bee shear, Bawidius, would have snapped up smaller fish in its jaws, whilst keeping a watchful eye out for piscivorous dinosaurs and crocodiliforms itself. These crocodiliforms include the likes of Aegisuchus, Leganosuchus, and Allosuchus, but the strangest of them by far was Stomatosuchus. This large relative of modern crocodiles would have occupied murky, brackish waters of North African swamps, gulping down fish in a bizarre, pelican-like throat pouch. Overhead, on Hengarid pterosaurs such as Ceracopteryx and Nicorhynchus would have swooped and snapped at life in the water and were perhaps occasionally caught by adventurous or particularly hungry Carcharodontosaurus. Carcharodontosaurus belonged to a family of dinosaurs named after it, the Carcharodontosauridae. Similar to other dinosaurs we have covered recently on this channel, namely Giganotosaurus, these dinosaurs were all very large, and many of them were contenders for the largest theropods ever to live, some of which even rivaled the mighty Tyrannosaurus in size. Revisions to the family in 2022 have placed Carcharodontosaurus on a distinct branch of the family, with its closest relatives being those in the Giganotosaurinae clade. This includes giants such as Meraxes, Tyrannotitan, Giganotosaurus, and Mapusaurus. Elsewhere in the family were dinosaurs such as the mighty Acrocanthosaurus, the humpbacked Concavenador, and Neovenador, one of the largest theropods of the British Isles. Carcharodontosaurids typically lived long lives, with some species taking as long as 40 years to reach full maturity. Some of them are even thought to have continued growing throughout the entire course of their lives, reaching over 50 years old in some instances. This makes them the longest-lived theropods known to science. All of these species were large theropod predators, and in most cases, apex predators in the environments they inhabited. Some such as Carcharodontosaurus and Acrocanthosaurus would have had no natural predators in adulthood. The only threat to them would have been fully grown members of the same species. The last of the Carcharodontosaurids went extinct around 89 million years ago, missing the mass extinction event that killed the dinosaurs by a long, long time. So that's a rundown of the life, habits, and discovery of Carcharodontosaurus, one of the largest known predators of the Mesozoic era. These gigantic carnivores are still bringing plenty of knowledge and intrigue to the paleontological world, and as we continue to make more discoveries across the late Cretaceous fossil sites of North Africa, this is only set to improve more and more. Perhaps eventually, we will be able to see the full picture of how these giants lived and hunted.